tonight. From Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. It's week 12 of the NFL on EA Sports. Atlanta Falcons taking on the New Orleans Saints. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Tonight, we write a finish to Week 12 with a good Monday night matchup between the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons. Charles Davis and Charles we take a look at this Falcons team as they interplay they're hot as can be winners of eight of their last nine games I don't know if you call this start a surprise exactly but they've proven that they're going to be able to stand toe to toe with anybody Playoff push is upon us. It's week 12 of the NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their third-year quarterback. And I thought it was a really nice performance last week by him. Three touchdown passes. I think that signifies exactly what he was getting done. He did have the one interception. But that's the ratio you say you're okay with, right? If you go three to one, you're going to be pretty happy over the course of the season. And let's face it, he'll never blame the receiver publicly. But behind closed doors, <laughs> he probably told his agent, hey, what's the deal? I should have had a perfect game. and 10. Rich targeting Thomas on the out route, making the catch. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. On the ground with a tight end. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. A great effort there with his fourth rushing touchdown on the year. And the Falcons take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. Week after week, Charles, when we see this offense operate, I don't know, they just seem to get more impressive. They certainly do, and let's face it, it's no surprise they're the best in the NFL in scoring. This team designs things well and executes even better. And here, it only takes a few snaps before they're in the end zone. That's how they demoralize teams. That's how they put them on notice. Extra point splits the uprights. And it's now a 7-0 game. They have the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Atlanta's 11 ready to go, and they kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, Everyone has matchups that they like better than others. Where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 
19 carries, 80 yards, and a touchdown. And as we discovered in talking with the coaching staff prior to the game, going up against a team that struggled against the run has only emboldened them to run the football more. I expect 40 to 50 carries in this game. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. That's now consecutive five-yard carries to pick up the first down. These two teams, they met in Atlanta earlier in the year with the Falcons winning that game. So a win here in Atlanta would give them the season sweep. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Hodges. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Back to throw. Hagan. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Looking to throw on second down. Hagan, and they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. That reception, it brings him up to the 700 plateau. He's at 700 career NFL catches now. And that club in baseball, a rather exclusive club, and one we talk about all the time in football, puts you in the top 50 all. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Points one, two, and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free. They did it there. Luckily, offense hangs on to it. Yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second at a country mile. Now he dumps this off over the middle. It'll go as a gain of four. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Looking to throw. Hagan. He's got Smith here. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. So now on comes the field goal unit. And wow, this is no ordinary try here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. That kick, by the way, Charles, a career long. Well, we did watch him in pregame, and he hit from this distance. So not a surprise, but there still is something exciting about it, carrying it over from practice and pregame to actually doing it in live action. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. And you know, it's certainly a lot of football left to play. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're in first place in their division, looking really good and looking to be a threat come January. And are you one of those early holiday shoppers, partner? Are you one of those guys get your list done? Because I think about what every team has on their holiday shopping list right now. What's the number one goal? Make the playoffs. Number two? win your division. Number three, and I think the biggest goal of all, try to get the number one seed so you get that first round bye and ensure you don't have to go anywhere in January and hopefully get to the Super Bowl that way. Protection certainly gonna need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Operating from the gun, Rich. And he's got his man on the out round. And he'll be out of bounds near the 30. In fact, right on the 30. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back. But now they look at third down 
as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. From the gun on third down, Rich, and that will be incomplete. The Falcons send out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. It's taken to the 26. And that'll be a return of 12 following a very nice punt. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And Charles, if the season ended today, and it's not going to, we still have December Yay, left. More <laughs> football. We're only in November. Uh, but they would be a wild card team. And that's great. They'd be in the playoffs, but you know they're trying to bump up to be one of those division leaders. That guarantees you at least one home game in the playoffs, and that's what you're really seeking. But there also isn't much margin for error for this team, right? Because right where they're sitting, a two-game losing streak can have them out of the playoffs. So they've got to make sure they continue to keep the momentum going. Absolutely. There's some sharks smelling blood in the water behind them. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Back to throw. Hagan. Under pressure, they got him again. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. That's three sacks now, and that's not much of a surprise to me, nor should it be to you. This team, they lead the league in sacks. Yeah, they do. This is something that we are starting to witness time and time again. Back-to-back -back sacks have this place in a frenzy as they line up again third and long now. Looking to throw. Hagan. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. Here comes the Saints punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. We'll call that a 49-yard punt, but a net of just 39 following the 10-yard return. So here are the Falcons to take over on offense. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Rich, he finds his man complete. That's Myers. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple at its second down. This defense for the Saints, they were very strong last week in the win over Carolina. It was a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few. And he fires one that's intercepted. And the Saints are going to take possession of the football. You're looking there at a defensive back who's maybe a step slower than he was when he came into the league a decade ago. I know I question his speed coming into the game, but what he's lost in speed, he's more than made up for it with intellect. And that's a great job of knowing how to position himself to make that interception. Now the Saints coming back out ready to go for this next drive. Following the interception, they're set up nicely here, already inside the red zone, knocking on the door, if you will, first and 10. They'll run on first down. Hodges, and he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick, more than a space eater. He just made a great play there. On second down now, it's Hodges. And he'll take this one down near the 15. In danger of squandering their great field position as they come up on a third and seven. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Out 
now is the field goal unit for New Orleans. This from 32 yards away. And his kick here is good. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. As the offense comes out here, Charles, uh, maybe perhaps a bit more of a focus on the run game for this drive after tossing an interception on the previous one? Oh, I think that's a good way to look at it and a good way to think about it, but maybe they get to it in a little bit different way because after you throw an interception, you want to make sure you keep your quarterback's confidence high. So maybe give him a couple easy throws that he can complete and then get to the running game and try and get things settled down. Yeah, and still in the first half here, a long way to go. Seven yards there and a first down. The Falcons at eight and two on the year. And they come in as a team that looks like a well-oiled machine getting ready for the postseason. Winners at eight of their last 10. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. Well, they got a takeaway on the last drive with an interception. How about this sack as a terrific follow-up? And that keeps pressure on this offense, and it could force them into more rush decisions or another turnover. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Back to throw. Rich, and pressure coming, and they got him once again. It'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? That's three sacks now, and this team came into the game in the bottom five in the league in sacks. Yeah, this What's is going not, on? It's not been their bread and butter. I don't know, is a blind squirrel finding a nut, <laughs> or is this something they can build on? Well, they found some momentum. They found a crack in that offensive line, and they're putting it to good use. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. The New Orleans offense set to take over. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately, had an alert teammate who was able to get it. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Operating from the gun, Hagan. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. A big gain there after going backwards, and that'll lead to a third down. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's gonna be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. From the gun on third down, Hagan. Look at this time for Woods, and it's intercepted. 
And the Falcons are going to take possession of the football. And partner, I think this is where long-term starters in the NFL separate themselves from the rest of the pack because there's still three, four quarters left in this one. More than enough time to move past a pair of early mistakes and find a way to lead your team to a win. Mental resiliency, a characteristic every NFL team's looking for in their quarterback. So first and 10 now from the 30. Throwing to start the drive. Rich got his man complete over the middle. That's Jacobs. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man in the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it from route running to catching the football. That's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Up the middle they go. Stanley down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Second and four, they could still get a first down without scoring. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Touchdown, Falcons! A great play there. His second touchdown on the season. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Now for the point after. And it's up. It's good. Our score, 14-6. to six. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the Falcons score to cap it off. Atlanta's 11 ready to go, and they kick it away. Taken in at the three. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Saints coming out now to take the field. Well, still early in this one, Charles, but the last time this offense was out there, they threw their first interception of the ball game, so trying to avoid repeating that mistake here on this drive. And to put a positive spin on it, at least it happened in the first half and not in a close game in the fourth quarter, but you're absolutely right, partner. One of the last things this offensive quarterback wants to witness again in this game. Kind of an obvious question, Charles, but anything you try to avoid after your first pick or you say, it's one interception, we're still in the first half, I'm going to do the same thing. I think you want to avoid playing scared, you know, and put it into the mind of the quarterback that you've lost confidence in him. Make sure you get some throws that he's going to be able to complete, make him feel good about himself, and continue to run your offense. Off play action. Hagan. And a throw right sideline is complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Starting to rack up the yardage here in this first half. Five catches now and a first down. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Looking to throw. Hagan. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Let's go, let's go. Throwing on first down. Hagan, quick slant here to Woods. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant, 
A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. Hodges, they stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Early down stuffs to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. To throw on second down. Hagan firing quickly here, and that's complete. A gain of eight there on the play, and that will bring up third and one. Back to throw. Hagan. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sand. Well, Charles, this has been something to watch so far. This is where you really feel for a quarterback. He's been running for his life in this first half. Brandon, that's five sacks already, so you know he's got to be saying, can we get some more guys in here to block, please? Because if we don't, we're going to need another quarterback. Out now is the field goal unit for New Orleans. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And that'll get the lead down to five. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, he's still been able to come away with points due to his leg. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Falcons ready to take over. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To there he goes, left side. Touchdown, Falcons. Falcons are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. What an excellent run, and from the beginning, the defense just looked a little fooled, a little out of position. A little bit frozen, too, because when you hand the ball inside, you lose sight of it oftentimes as a defender, and your eyes naturally gravitate to the quarterback. And before they realized it, he was often running through the thick of the line while the quarterback faked it and carried it outside. Now the try here for the extra point. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. Well, I'm not sure if they drew that play up to score, but it scored indeed. One play on the ground and into the end zone for six. Atlanta's 11 ready to go, and they kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Looking to throw. Hagan, quick hitter here, it's complete. 50 catches for him now on the year, and he's got a first down. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Hodges. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. 
45 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 47. Back to throw, Hagan. Throw left side complete, Brad Smith. Looking to throw on second down. Hagan, and he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, short tackle. The offense on third down tonight, a pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This will be third and six. And the throw there going to be incomplete. I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw this. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Falcons. A great effort there. 87 yards as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. And Charles, I had an offensive coordinator tell me one time that they designed every play to score. I don't know how true that is, but he had to run a long way after that catch. Heck of a play. I think that when he was telling you that, he was designing run after catch in every play. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way to put it in there, and that's what we got on that one. Nice catch, an even better run for big yardage. Extra point right down the middle. And that will make this a 19-point game. Atlanta's 11 ready to go, and they kick it away. chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. Throwing to start the drive. Hagan. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Up the middle they go. Hodges, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Looking to throw, Hagan. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. 
Off the play fake. Hagan. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense got it, they were already within a shadow of the goalpost. Yeah, and then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you've got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. So danger averted for the moment, but now here's a third and long. Back to throw. Hagan. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. And the Falcons are going to take possession of the football. Three first half interceptions now, and Charles, you'd have to think a fair amount of concern is developing over there on that sideline. And there should be, because essentially, he's been a little loose and possibly reckless with the football here in the first half. Now, maybe it's not all on him, but still, three interceptions, that puts the entire team in jeopardy. So, the play caller from here on out, Got to design some throws for him that he can complete, keep it away from the defense, and try and get him back on track. On first down, Rich. Wide open receiver complete. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Atlanta. Looking to throw. Rich, he finds his man complete. It's Myers. Second down and four. Operating from the gun. Rich, throwing middle, and it's complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 13-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And Myers has it over the middle. And the Falcons are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. They go play action here on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Not the first and goal play they drew up. Multiple defenders in to bring him down to the ground. So that now four first half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. Now a handoff up the middle. Stanley. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So after four touchdowns in the game for this offense, this time they're forced into taking the three. But you did mention four touchdowns, right? So four out of five, not too bad. I think that's a pretty good record for them. Set to take over once again. Out comes the Saints offense. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. to throw here on second and ten. And Woods has it complete. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. 
He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped out a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Looking for Woods again, and he finds him. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. I throw, but he makes the catch. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. Back-to-back -back plays of right around 30 yards, and the field position has totally been flipped. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk-reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on them. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. That'll give him eight that time. And they'll be left with second and a couple. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. From six yards away. And the Saints are able to cut into that deficit. And that touchdown ends a streak, for lack of a better word, of three field goals that they put on the board previously. They finally cracked the code. Yeah, they've been down there. They've been in enemy territory, as you said. They just hadn't been able to punch it in until that point. A try here for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to 15. A drive that time of six plays, and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded right around the eight. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Atlanta regains possession of the football. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines, hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Stanley. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to throw. Rich looking middle, and that's complete. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. They'll look to throw again. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. To throw again. Rich. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. On third down. Rich. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. And the punter's on the sideline. Here's the field goal unit now to try an exceptionally long one. 
and he's gonna miss this one wide to the left from distance it's no good and that will keep this a 15 point game. The Saints offense going to head out now late in this first half. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but Charles, they look up and they're still down double digits, so you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember... This is caught inside the 15. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. And that one results in 35 yards. As a general manager, you're counting on your first and second round draft picks to have a big time impact on your team. But where you make your bones, rounds three through seven. If you can find a few diamonds in the rough there, develop them, then you've got something going. And we're seeing one right here. Yeah, plays like that lead me to believe that they found a diamond in the rough. So now following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Looking to throw. Hagan over the middle to Smith. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. To throw on second down. Hagan feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And that is incomplete. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. So we come upon halftime and what's a 12-point game at the break. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. Next, we head off to check out another game. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Arizona Cardinals. The Bucks are able to get that record back to 500, but they face an uphill climb in the final four weeks to secure a playoff berth. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Pittsburgh Steelers. Joe Burrow, four touchdown passes in the victory. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you very much. As we welcome you back for quarter number three, the Falcons back to receive. They've got the lead, and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway. This will be fielded inside the five and out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Falcons ready to go back to work to start the third quarter. 
But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shipped into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. And the Saints are going to take possession of the football. Not the way you envision things to start out the third quarter. One play and already a turnover. It's interesting. You and I were talking with the coach, and he talked about how at halftime, as a play caller, he wanted to make sure he got a new script going for the second half, not just the one that he operated off of to start the game. Nowhere on that script did it have that result. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Throwing to start the drive. Hagan. And he'll just get rid of it. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. From the gun on third down. Hagan, throw left side complete. That's Hodges. And the Saints are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Back to throw. Hagan firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pickup of three. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Looking to throw. Hagan. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. A five-yard touchdown. And the Saints take advantage of the short field and finish it off with a quick touchdown. So a strong drive here to lead off this third quarter and gets them right back in this football game. And I think we can safely call that a statement drive because they had to be saying, we have put our best foot forward in the first half, but we certainly mean business now. Maybe a better term, a prove-it drive. They proved it to themselves that they were ready to go. Point after, right down the middle. And this is back to a five-point game. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. This will be fielded inside the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. On first and ten, Rich. Quick hitter here, it's complete. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Second and five. Back to throw. Rich. Gonna throw right side here. Complete. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. On first down, it's Stanley. Well, he gave one defender the slip, but others waiting in the wings and dropping him behind the line. 
I'm getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there, and this D is fired up. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Operating from the gun. Rich going down the middle, and it's complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 44-yard line. A gain of 18 and a new set of downs. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Looking to throw. Rich, and this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Up the middle they go. It's Stanley. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Operating from the gun, Rich. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll get this only to about the 38 as they stop him a few yards shy of the line to gain. What hallmark of good defenses? It's understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're gonna try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And he's gonna miss this one. That is no good. Well outside the left upright, and they'll be unable to build here onto their five-point lead. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out, but I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. Looking to throw on second down. Hagan, and he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Now a handoff up the middle. Hodges. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Second and 16. Operating from the gun, Hagan. Throws right side, and that's complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 22-yard line. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. They'll run on first down. It's Hodges. Go, go, go. 
just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They'll keep it on the ground. Hodges at a couple of yards as they move it from the 21 to the 19. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts, being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. 